Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm figuring right about now you are all getting pretty good at washing your hands. <laughs> no, but really, we have quite a bit to discuss. I was making breakfast and I thought to myself, why not get into a discussion about food? More specifically, food manufacturing or processing and food labeling. Now, I have discussed this before to some degree, but I feel with everything that is going on right now, maybe it's a good time to revisit the topic and show you all some things. Now, what I have been seeing around me is a lot, and I mean a lot, of food products that are, what's the word? Garbage. And the reason I keep seeing this type of food around everywhere is because people, maybe some of you, keep buying it. You're still buying processed and packaged foodstuffs. You're still eating out of the microwave when there is a perfectly good stove and oven right in front of you. You don't read the labels. You're just looking at the pictures. Ooh, that looks yummy. And I get it. The marketing for some of this stuff is fantastic. You know the food tastes like crap, or maybe you don't know. I'll tell you, and most people don't know this, for example, when you stop eating something like fast food, and there are so many, you know who they are, when you stop eating that stuff for an extended period of time, when you go back and try to eat that stuff again, you can taste the difference. It tastes funny, almost sour, and it makes you feel funny. It sits in your stomach like a brick. Of course, people have their excuses Oh, I don't have time, or, oh, that organic stuff is too expensive. And you know what I say? So? Let me ask you all a question. Would you rather put your time and money into eating good, real food? Or would you rather put your time and money into going to the hospital? And if you don't have anyone to bring you food, you're stuck there eating hospital stuff. And most of you know what I'm talking about. That stuff tastes like it came out of a vending machine. Now, I'm not a fanatic. And what I mean is, on my own, in my own home, I'm very strict about what I eat and I really don't make exceptions. I just won't eat until I can get my hands on some real nutrition. But, when I am in someone else's company or home, and even Jesus said this, I'll eat what they eat, mainly out of respect. It's fine. It's just a meal. I don't make a big deal out of it, even if they serve me something heated in the microwave. I'll eat it because that's what they know and are used to. I don't expect everyone to have the exact same diet as me. I'm not sitting there like Gordon Ramsay critiquing a restaurant. I love those shows, by the way. But I will talk about the things that I like to eat and maybe try to educate them a bit by feeding them so that they can taste and feel the difference. So what I want to do with this presentation is take you with me on a walkthrough of the supermarket so that you will be able to see what I see. So folks, and I cannot emphasize this enough, you have to read food labels. I don't care if you are at Whole Foods or Trader Joe's, read the labels. I know it does keep you in the store a bit longer, but as you go, you will learn what to avoid before even entering the market. Most of what you see in the coolers and on the shelves all comes from just a handful of conglomerate food companies. Here's the main rule that I follow. Buy food that is as close to as nature intended. I like making things from scratch and because you put more time and love energy into your food, it tastes better and it is more fulfilling. Plus your yield is greater. So usually when you first walk into a commercial market, 
you walk right into the produce. Mainly because they need to get that stuff out and sold quick. Now, if you can get organic, great. But if you can't, don't worry about it so much. I go for leafy greens and I never, never buy that watery ball of crap that we all know to be iceberg lettuce. I like lemons, limes, apples, oranges. I don't like navel oranges because it's a mutant orange. It's a hybrid that can't have kids. Same with seedless watermelons and grapes. They don't even have any taste. I like root vegetables, carrots, potatoes. I usually prefer the gourmet potatoes, beets, rutabaga, parsnip, turnips. And with these types of things, one thing to keep in mind, depending on where you live, it's a good idea to eat what's in season. Let's see, green and red peppers, hot peppers, legumes, broccoli, kale, collards, spinach, celery, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, sprouts, mushrooms. I like shiitake and portobello, cucumbers, squash, zucchini, cabbage, artichoke. Speaking of cabbage, sauerkraut is a great source of probiotics. I like melons, and my favorite are small fruits like berries, especially blueberries. I like things like mangoes and pineapples. Although I don't have a problem with bananas, I used to work as a produce clerk when I was much younger, and I would eat bananas all the time. Till I just got sick of them. Large fruits tend to have a lot of sugar in them anyway, but I enjoy them from time to time. The great thing about the produce department is there are no food labels. You just have to know if it's organic or not, or what farm they come from. And here's the thing. If you shop at the same store all the time, you have the time to find out and remain aware of where all that stuff comes from. Let's see, what else? Let's move on to the bakery. Now, I rarely, rarely, if ever, buy commercially packaged bread. If I do, it's usually a rye. Most of that stuff, you know, bread is supposed to only have a few ingredients. Flour, water, yeast, salt. And when you make fresh bread, it only lasts a couple of days, really. So why does something like Wonder Bread last so much longer? I'll tell you why because it's loaded with a bunch of garbage. I mean, look at this. No wonder people have gluten sensitivities when they add concentrated wheat gluten to bread so that they can maintain its consistency when making big batches of this stuff when commercially processed. And it works as sort of a glue and keeps the bread on the shelf longer. And you really should stop reading the ingredients right there and put the bread back. High fructose corn syrup, poison. Soybean oil, poison. Good Lord, calcium sulfate? What in the world? You guys see how sick these companies can be, right? You know what calcium sulfate is? It is an inorganic compound. Did you hear what I just said? It's an inorganic compound, and they use it for desiccants. <laughs> it's plaster of Paris. Sodium, sterolactylate, ethyl exalate mono and diglycerides, calcium dioxide and or azotecarbonamide. That calcium dioxide is used as an industrial oxidant to help extract metals from ore. And the other stuff is plastic foam. I mean, do I really need to go any further? Make your own bread or buy it fresh, folks. Let's go to seafood. So, I like to indulge in a little shrimp on occasion, crab, and maybe every two or three years I'll have a little lobster tail. But here's my rule for seafood. You want to eat fish that have scales and fins. For example, catfish, they have fins but no scales. Plus they are bottom feeders, which means they eat a bunch of garbage sitting at the bottom of the water. But like a lot of shellfish, they are loaded with toxins like heavy metals. No octopus, no squid. I don't mind mussels, although, again, I rarely eat them. Pelagic fish, like the ones that neither swim too close to the bottom nor too close to the shore. Herrings, sardines. Like I said, 
you want fish that have fins and scales. Larger fish, top swimmers. I prefer salmon or tuna, sometimes swordfish. And if I come across some shark, it depends on how I feel. One thing to keep in mind, you want all this stuff wild caught. Farm raised, for example, farm raised salmon or tilapia is pretty bad for you. Like with farm raised salmon, they keep them bunched up in huge tanks. The fish don't have anywhere to move around. They feed the fish garbage, inject them with antibiotics. The water is polluted and because the salmon can't develop properly, they have to inject the fish with dyes just to get that pink color, which is much lighter in color when you compare it to wild caught salmon. Now when it comes to the meat department, normally there are really only a few choices, chicken, turkey, beef, pork. Sometimes there's duck or game hen, and sometimes there may be some bison, maybe some lamb or even goat. If you like pork, that's fine. I myself do enjoy bacon, but just keep in mind that pork is very hard to digest and pigs, pigs will eat anything in front of them, even their own feces and whatever they eat turns into the meat you eat. Beef, I prefer grass fed and I usually go for prime cuts. I like a ribeye and my favorite is a dry aged ribeye. If I can, maybe once a year I'll go for a tomahawk steak. The only thing is about those, they tend to be extremely expensive, around a hundred dollars a steak. Stay away from any animals that are raised under poor conditions. Like I have stated before, you really want to know where the meat comes from. Just ask the butcher there, they'll tell you. Same thing goes for chicken. Now here's the thing about chicken. Cage free all day. Chickens that get to roam around and eat what they want. And they are not vegetarians by the way. Chickens like other birds eat bugs, insects, worms, along with seeds. You know, bird food. The commercial stuff, you don't want it. Sometimes they soak that stuff in ice water so that it swells up to look juicier. It will say something like 6% or 4% retained water. Now when they label it natural or all natural, that doesn't mean anything. It's a trick to make you think it's healthy. All it means is that they didn't add artificial flavorings, colorings, or preservatives. Meats are the trickiest thing because there is no ingredient label. The best thing to do really is to grab meats from a local farm near you that you can actually go to and visit and where you can actually see the living conditions of the animals there. Same deal for organ meats. Let's move along, shall we? Now here we are at dairy. I don't drink cow's milk. It was meant to be consumed raw. You milk the cow, you chill the milk, and then you drink it that day. After that it starts to separate. Even if it's grass-fed organic milk, if it's pasteurized or ultra pasteurized, it's no good. It's poison at that point. It's cooked milk that has been cooled down. Here's the thing. I do love cheese. So I get out of my own way when it comes to cheese. Just never ever ever eat imitation cheese. It's nothing but a bunch of oils and emulsifiers with coloring flavoring. It is truly fake. It doesn't even melt. I'll use sour cream for cooking. I'm not a yogurt fan, but if you eat yogurt, it is basically fermented milk and the probiotics tend to be healthy. If you have access to the right kind of yogurt that isn't loaded with sugar and coloring, just make sure the only ingredient is milk which is usually Greek yogurt. You're not going to be able to get around the pasteurize, that's just the law. By the way, don't think that milk is a good source of calcium. It is not. At least commercially processed and pasteurized milk isn't. Goat milk is the better option when it comes to milk. So here we are at the frozen department, where you have things like frozen fruits and vegetables, Frozen entrees, frozen pizza, ice cream, things like that. When it comes to ice cream, we are talking about frozen dairy. The two main things to look out for here is corn syrup and wheat, whether it's whey or flour. Frozen fruits and vegetables, for the most part, 
are what they are, but they may have added salt. It's when you get into the frozen entrees and pre-made, pre-cooked foods. I would stay away from that stuff. My rule is, I don't want anything that's already been cooked. Now, I like French fries, but again, if you choose to eat that stuff, you should start to think about your health more. And if you can refrain from picking up a package of frozen French fries, they are loaded with preservatives. Go home and cut some potatoes into French fries and then try to freeze them and see what happens. I mean, you cut into a potato and it immediately starts to change color. That should tell you a lot about what you are eating when you choose frozen fries. Most of everything in the frozen food section is some of the worst stuff you can consume. All that stuff that comes in boxes, your entrees, your cuisines, your TV dinners, some with popular restaurant labels, some of it ready to go in microwavable containers. Stop eating that stuff for a while, then go back and try to eat it again and see what happens you're going to do your stomach and body a disservice. It's overpriced. It never tastes like it's supposed to taste. It looks disgusting. And most people microwave it without realizing you can take it out of the plastic container and conventionally heat it. You're better off eating the box it came in. So by now, you should all be recognizing a pattern here. Now, we can walk up and down the aisles, breakfast cereals. I don't even walk down that aisle. You have to douse that stuff in milk anyway. And it's not breakfast anyway. It's a snack, junk food. You must be cuckoo if you're eating Cocoa Puffs thinking that is breakfast. That's why it's always close to the candy and chips aisle. And you know that all that stuff is bad for you. And when you buy that stuff, you are making the high fructose corn syrup factory a fortune. Condiments and sauces, the ingredients on these products vary. Some companies understand that some people like raw ingredients, and they have gotten a bit better at that. But preservatives, the food dyes, the MSG, which is often hidden by the word spice, just be careful when it comes to condiments and sauces. You read the front label, now read the back. Don't be scared. Canned foods, ugh. Anything in a can is pasteurized or cooked. In the can after it has been sealed. Sometimes at over 200 degrees for more than 45 minutes. And they are loaded, I mean loaded with preservatives and other chemical. And it is in these aisles that you have to do the most reading. I can't possibly cover every food item I can't even think of every food item that these stores carry. So now that you have a pretty good idea of how to shop, what I want to do now is go over just a few ingredients that you may come across while going over these labels. These are the things you need to say no to. Aspartame or any artificial sweetener for that matter. People are so concerned about calories. Why? Come on, stop worrying about calories. Sodium nitrite. They use this stuff as a preservative, and it's usually found in hot dogs, packaged meats, and fish. It's to prolong shelf life by dehydrating the food which keeps bacteria from forming. Xanthan gum. It's in your hair gel. It's in concrete, and it's used as a thickener for some of your salad dressing and sauces. It's really just fermented bacteria and sugar. Yeah, I know they sell this stuff isolated in its own packaging. They sell MSG in its own packaging too. Just because it's on the shelf doesn't mean it's good to use. And selling this stuff as a recipe ingredient is diabolical. They know this stuff can cause lung problems and flu symptoms, gas and bloating. Now does that sound good to you? And here's the thing you need to understand and accept. They will package poison in the guise of health food, mainly because they have so much of it in access in some warehouse that they need to find a way to get rid of it. High fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, fructose, all the same crap. Do not consume it. Even if the ingredient just says sugar, not good. If you're going to eat something with sugar in it, it should be raw cane sugar. 
sodium and potassium benzoate. Stay away. Benzene is known to cause thyroid damage. It is a carcinogen. I mean, you really use the stuff to preserve fish bait. You shouldn't be eating it. BHA or butylated hydroxyanisole. This stuff, you only eat it if you want hormone issues. I mean, it's in skincare products. Why is it in your food? By the way, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. Just put the food down. BHT2, butylated hydroxytoluene. That's in things like cereal, potato chips, shortening, palm oil, hydrogenated oils, all trans fats. Those fake butters, you can't believe it's not butter. I can't believe people still eat that stuff. And don't be fooled by the vegan label. They know people are into vegan stuff and they will rope you in and fool you just like they did once people started jumping on organic products. You want vegan butter? Make it at home. It's not hard and it's healthy. Food dyes, blue, green, red, yellow, one, two, three. Just put it back. If it has that stuff in it, put it back. You think Fruit Loops has all those different colors because of fruit? Let me finish off this list and tell you the ingredients and what they may cause. Azote carbonamide, asthma. Propylene glycol or antifreeze, cancer. MSG or monosodium glutamate, heart problems, sometimes seizures. Carrageenan, cancer and ulcers. Magnesium sulfate, cancer. Chlorine dioxide, cancer and hyperactivity. Aluminum, cancer. Paraben, cancer and hormone disruption. Saccharin, cancer. Agave nectar, liver disease and inflammation. Bromate or anything brominated, organ damage. Propyl gallate, cancer. Polysorbate, cancer. Folks, the list of ingredients to avoid is very, very long. Most of which is all approved here in the States. Some banned in other countries, which should tell you something. A lot of this stuff is renamed and they keep coming up with and adding new toxic ingredients that people aren't familiar with yet. So what you can do or get in the habit of doing is every time you read a label and come across something that you're like, what the heck is that? Just put it back and don't be fooled by the front labels either. Natural, all natural, organic, no added sugar, light, low fat, low calorie, low carb, multi-grain, fortified, zero trans fat made with whole grains, enriched, gluten-free, vegan, all this stuff, they are just scams. And once you understand that, then you will understand that real food doesn't have an ingredient label. Does that make sense? We have to all get better at choosing the right foods to eat, myself included. I don't have a perfect diet, but over the years I have developed certain habits and so I naturally avoid a lot of this stuff when I can help it. I didn't even get into beverages and scam water. That's a whole other topic. So I hope you enjoy this presentation and can take with you some of this information on your next grocery trip. And stay tuned, I have a lot more to present in other matters. Unless you want to be slowly poisoned to death, make some habit changes. Start paying attention, gain understanding, make that decision and make it today, make it now.